And now the end is near And so I face the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again, too few to mention I did what I had to do And signed through Without exemption I planned Each charted course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way All right, so tell me what we're going to cook tonight. A mob-style Italian meal. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So tonight, we're going to be making a basic Italian dinner. It's going to be spaghetti, meatballs, and we're going to have a nice strawberry and balsamic vinaigrette dessert. You know, I have a date with the wine cellar. I'll pick us out some nice wines for the evening, mostly Italian, and I'll be back shortly. Can you handle it? Yeah, okay. don't hurry back. Okay. Okay, lovelies, ladies, enjoy your evening. Oh we'll see God. you shortly. Bye, Joey. Okay, girls, concentrate. We're gonna make the sweet stuff first. We got work to do. We're gonna make a nice strawberry dessert. Adrian is gonna cut up some strawberry dessert. Kind of like Jimmy Hoffa's last surprise birthday party. <laughs> Okay, these cakes. Hand me that balsamic vinegar, the good stuff. Tony, what's basmati vinegar? It's a good thing you're so beautiful because you're kind of hot. <laughs> okay, balsamic vinegar is wine. It's fermented. It's fermented in oak barrels. I've seen it up to 24 years old. We have a two-year-old here. It's a great accompaniment to the strawberries and the powdered sugar that we're going to be using. So I'm going to add about an ounce and a half these strawberries. Oh, and it's also great on my best. <laughs> All right, Adrian, I'm gonna have you use three tablespoons of that powdered sugar. Put it all over that beautiful Italian skin. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. We're gonna use powdered sugar because if you use granulated sugar, it's like sex on the beach. It's way overrated. It's grainy. We don't want grainy strawberry. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know if I can cook anymore. Uh, put three tablespoons on there, please. Okay, so you see how easily it mixes in with the balsamic vinegar and the strawberries? It dissipates. And it's not gonna be real grainy, it's actually gonna be mixed into the strawberries and you're going to have a beautiful wonderful dessert now i'm going to have adriana take this to the ice box and have it marinate for about two hours i want to go too me you take your girls to caesar's palace and you want to go to the ice box together <laughs> No soupy, it's food. <laughs> so I'm gonna heat this up to about 250 degrees. Adriana, would you pour half a cup of extra virgin olive oil in there? Because we know that's the only virgin in this. <laughs> okay, so now our olive oil is nice and hot. You see how it's just starting to smoke? I love to cook with olive oil. It's the greatest thing in the world to cook with. 
We're gonna have Adriana add four tablespoons of minced garlic. We mince this ourselves. This is everything we do, we do ourselves. So she's gonna put it in the pan. Here's the trick. I'm gonna teach you how to deglaze the pan. So, if you burn this garlic, no good. You gotta throw it away, start over. So now, how the pan's hot, you see when you get the garlic in there? Now, we cook it down. If you can see it, how it's turning translucent, and it's not burning, you smell that girl? Mmm, you see there's a little bit of brownness in there? That's good. Now, hand me that Pinot Grigio. Okay, this is Pinot Grigio, it's a light white wine. You only use wine if you're gonna drink to cook it. You see how that's degrading the pan? What that does is that lifts up everything from the bottom of the pan. Now we're gonna let all the alcohol cook out. And we're gonna stir the garlic. You see how the garlic is golden brown? You see, you see if it's golden and translucent. Never burn. If you burn, throw it away. Okay, now we're going to add the San Maranzano tomato. See how the alcohol is cooked off? And as the sauce cooks, more alcohol will cook off. So Adrian is going to pour that in. Okay. Now we're going to stir this up and we're going to bring it to a high boil. Okay, and once it starts boiling, we're going to simmer it for about three hours. You have to turn it down. The sweetness of the tomatoes and the garlic and the wine. Did you see how simple that was? It's, a, it's Italian food. Simple ingredients. Not like Americanos. They put too much of everything in there. This is very simple sauce and can be used in many, many recipes. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this to a high boil. Once it boils, then I'm going to move it to the side and simmer it for about three hours, okay? All right, that's a cooking with the love. If you're not going to cook with the love, you might as well go to the Golden Arches where that clown cooks the hamburger. <laughs> You know, one lady asked me one time if she could cook with that canned stuff from the store. Here's how I cook with that Say hello to my little friend. Don't cook with that Poison your enemies, not your family. So we're gonna bring this to a boil. This is the holy trinity, olive oil, wine and garlic. Then you throw in the San Maranzano tomatoes and you got a perfect sauce. So I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and we're gonna let it simmer. After it gets to a high boil, we'll let it simmer for about three to four hours. Now we're gonna do the pasta. Ladies, can you give me some pasta water, please? Grazie. Now we got to bring this to a boil. Now I'm going to show you a secret nobody knows. We're going to cook with the pasta now. Adriana, I'm going to have you put about two pounds of pasta in the water. We already have the water boiled. All right, Adrian, I'm gonna put that in. Don't burn those pretty hands. Okay, vivacious Vicky, throw in some salt. In the pot, in the pot. He said to throw it. Okay, now we're gonna do the olive oil. Adriana, put in some olive oil. It's extra virgin. It's not gonna make you a virgin again. But I don't think the whole male race wants you a virgin anyway. <laughs> so how long do we cook this? About six minutes. It's got to be kind of hard. Nobody likes the limp and noodle. It's the funja de me. We're going to need a pot and a strainer. Here's the secret. Probably going to get a hit put out on the forgiving But this is very important. 
we're gonna let these girls strain the pasta and we're gonna save the water. It's like a stock. It's very, very, very important to Italian cooking. Not many people know that. Now I'm gonna have Adriana put a little bit of olive oil on the pasta. Now we're gonna cool the pasta so it doesn't cook anymore, so it stays al dente. So we're gonna run it under some cold water. I'm gonna move this sauce over here. And I'm gonna show you the secret. You see the color of this, the yellowness? This is just like a stock. It's very starchy. It's very salty and it has that pasta and olive oil taste. We're going to add two ladles. What does that do to the sauce? Well, it's starchy so it thickens it. It also adds a salty olive oil taste that you can't get anywhere else. And so this water is very important. I'm going to have Adriana put it in the refrigerator, it lasts for about a week, and when we cook something else, we're gonna use that later. Okay, this is about perfect. Now this is my favorite part. I get to watch these two Italian girls play with the meat. We love meatballs! The meat, you gotta see them make Italian sausage. Now we're going to make a meat to balls. We're going to start out with five pounds of ground beef. 80-20. Everybody says lean this, lean that. Whole foods. You just don't eat it too much. Then we're going to use one pound of ground pork. Ground what? Uh, chopped up piggies. <laughs> You gotta get this at your local butcher. They'll ground it kind of coarsely for you. It'll make your meatballs a lot better. Okay, so now we're gonna have Adriana add the beef to the bowl. And now we're gonna use the ground pork. Okay, ladies, now we're gonna whisk some eggs. We have six cracked eggs over there. Adriana, whisk them up. Okay. Not like this, you gotta whisk them fast. Oh. There you go, whisk them up so they all become one. Okay, now put them in the meat. Now we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now, two tablespoons of garlic. Okay, now we're gonna add breadcrumbs. Now, breadcrumbs. If you go to the store, don't buy Progresso, don't buy flavored breadcrumbs. We gotta have breadcrumbs with no taste, and then you add fresh parsley, which gives everything a real fresh taste. People don't think parsley has taste, but it adds such a freshness to the meat. Now, the secret. This is two-year-old Reggiano Parmigiana cheese. We're gonna add that in there. That's gonna give it a flavor like you've not tasted it before. Tony, what's Reggie's Parmesan cheese? Thank you. That's exactly why we're making this. There's so much divorce in America. Any ladies over 40, you're gonna need my help. This is not the cheese we buy from Wally. This is freshly grated Reggiano Parmesan. It comes from five Providence in Italy. It's grated fresh, so the flavor doesn't lose it. You grate it fresh every time you use it. Kind of a nutty flavor. Mm, <laughs> yes, it does. Want to finish the meatballs? Let's finish. Add the milk. About a half a cup. Half a cup. Okay, this is my favorite part. We're going to get to watch these beautiful ladies play with the meat. <laughs> We're going to mix the meat up. We don't want to mix it up too much so we get a gummy balls. We don't want gummy balls. Adriana, start a folding. I want to help too. I'm going to step aside and have a glass of wine and enjoy it. <laughs> oh, 
that looks good. Now I'm gonna te teach you how to make meatballs. Okay, grab some meat. Oh, not enough. Why these guys have big balls? We're gonna make big meatballs. Okay, you wanna squeeze it together. Squeeze it with your hands. The reason you're squeezing it is because when you cook it, you don't want it to fall apart. Okay, now you roll. Isn't that fun? You roll it till it's round. All right. I got three secrets for you. One, I have a cast iron pan. Two, I have a cast iron pan full of meatballs. Uh. <laughs> so you can put your last meatball in there. Now get rid of it. Secret number three. Remember I've been telling you about that pasta water the whole time. This is a cast iron pan. It's loved for cooking. We're gonna cook these meatballs, but we're gonna do it in a water bath. We're gonna fill this pasta water in here until it's about halfway full. Then we're gonna cook it in the oven with the pasta water. What this does is it keeps the meatballs moist, it gives them a starchy, kind of salty pasta taste that you can't get with regular water. Remember, that's just like stock. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna cook it at 425 for 30 minutes. I'm gonna brown the top, and then I'm gonna turn it and brown it for 30 more minutes. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. We got the meatballs in the oven. We got the sauce cooking. We got the dessert in the refrigerator. We have the pasta cooling. Now it's time to go see my cousin Joey, the wine wise guy. Come on, let's go see Joey. Yeah, Joey knows what women want. Yeah, wine. <laughs> Hi, Joey. Oh, Moosey gets in my ears. <laughs> How are you, ladies? Good. Good to see you both. You too. How did it go? Good. Good. <laughs> oh, piano, 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 piano. Slowly, slowly, slowly. This is what I was thinking. How was that? Great. <laughs> this is what I was thinking. We should do maybe a little palate cleanser before we start the evening. Because throughout the course of the day, our palates are tuned into different types of food, our uh, body chemistry changes what we taste, so I thought we should do a palate cleanser. In Italy, they have a wonderful Prosecco, and anything that has bubbles in it generally cleanses the palate. Joey, is that what we had last weekend in Italy? No, dear. We oh. sampled plenty of wines, but this was not one of them. Okay. We didn't need a palate cleanser in Italy. Mm -hmm. So this Prosecco, you'll have so much fun with it. <gasps> so we'll sample a little bit of this bubbly. It's light, it's crisp, it's clean. Uh, you'll see how it cleanses the palate. It's a beautiful start or an accompaniment to any Italian dinner. Sometimes we have Prosecco prior to the meal, Sometimes we have it when we do wine tastings to cleanse the palate. Sometimes we do it after the meal. Tonight I think we should do it prior to and perhaps after because of our strawberries. How do you like it? I still feel dirty. <laughs> Honest to goodness. Yes. Maybe you should have just a touch more. Good idea. All right. Tonight's plan, in addition to the Prosecco to clean the palate, is to drink some wine that would accompany our meal. I've chosen an Italian Chianti. The reason I've chosen Chianti is because it's a wonderful region in Italy. The grape in the Chianti wine is Sangiovese. This just happens to come from Baron Riccasole. Baron invented the process of making Chianti wine. So I thought that would really be unique for the meal tonight and the taste is just unbelievably soft and sexy and warm and really work good with our uh, meatballs. So with that Chianti wine, uh, there's a special region called Rofina. So in Italy, Rofina is the highest elevated wine in Tuscany. So not only is it Chianti, 
because Chianti has three or four different levels and zones. There's Chianti, there's Chianti Classico, Chianti Reserva, and Chianti Raffina. So Raffina would really mix well with our San Marzano tomatoes and pasta. So I think this is the ticket this evening. What I find interesting about wine is this. The sweeter the food, the sweeter the wine. If the meal is light and crisp, the wine is light and crisp. If the meal has some character to it, like Italian meals, pasta, sauce, meat, meat sauce, then you need to pair that. So that's called La Abramento. That means the perfect marriage of wine and food. Really good food, like we're going to have tonight, stands on its own. Really good wine stands on its own. But if you have good wine and good food, the wine will enhance the flavor of the food. So the reason for the choice for Chianti Rovina is because I think it'll pair beautifully with our meal tonight, La Abramento. Should we go upstairs and help Tony in the kitchen? This is what I think we should do. I think we should taste through the Chianti Rovina first and make sure it's acceptable to our guests and then we'll join Tony and our guests. Good idea. Joey, hurry up! We got the family to feed him. There. Oh, Tom, remember what happens in the wine room? Oh, it stays in the wine room. <laughs> okay, so we have our pasta here in the water. Remember, we pre-cooked it. I'm gonna heat it up for about one minute. Here, I have the San Maranzano tomato sauce. I'm gonna show you how we do it in the restaurants. Joey, grab that strainer. I use a wire strainer. Most people don't have these at home. But I use this because it drains all the water out fast. So Joey, take that over to the sink. Smoke I'm gonna cousin. strain this pasta. Watch your hands, cousin Joey. Come on, baby. Okay, a few shakes. All right, over to the sauce. Now, this is our San Marzano tomato sauce. Pour it in. Ready to go? Ready to go. It's a real chef spoon. Okay, well, I'm gonna mix this up. Remember, I told you, everybody uses too much sauce in America, so every dish that goes out in my restaurant, this is how it's cooked. Before we send it out, we mix it with the sauce, and we cook it in the pan. And the starchiness of the noodles all start to hold on to the spaghetti. Now here's gonna be a little secret. Joey, throw in some Reggiano Parmigiano. And we throw a little bit of this. All right, now we're gonna stir it up a little more. Okay, so now, for me, that's optimal sauce. We have more sauce if you want more sauce. I'm gonna take this pan over and I'm gonna put it on this dish right here. Look at that pot. Oh, that looks great. Unbelievable. Okay, Joe. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of San Maranzano tomato sauce on it. If you like more sauce, I'm just gonna put one ladle right across, right across the top. We'll add more at the table. You can have that at the table. Joy Reggiano. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay, these are the meat the balls. Remember, we cooked them in the pasta water. I don't have any sauce on it. I'm gonna put a few ladles of sauce over the meatballs. Just barely cover them. Okay, Joey, cheese that one too. Ooh. There you go. This is our wonderful strawberry dessert. It's made with balsamic vinaigrette and powdered sugar. It goes great plain or over gelato. Thanks for being with us. You're part of the family. I'm Tony Ian. I'm the mob chef. And this is my cousin Joey, the wine and rice guy. Adiamo. Arrivederci. Ciao. And now the end is near. And so I faced the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case, of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this 
I did it my way.